Welcome back to the Creative Financing Podcast. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to ask you guys to scroll down a little bit and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot, encourages us to keep making more content here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us this week for the Creative Financing Podcast. I'm here with Cody Richard and Jeff Rappaport. Um, this episode is going to be Cody covering a few um, case studies, and hopefully we'll get to Jeff's um, feedback on some of these deals. Yeah, so I can go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so I have a couple of offers that we can potentially go through. Jeff is the expert here. I am just the, the apprentice. And so what I have here is basically a breakdown of a deal I have. It's a converted single family home in Boise, Idaho. So it was a single family home that's into five units now. So basically all the units are one bed, one bath. House is approximately 3000 square feet. It's in fair condition overall. Um, one of the bathrooms was redone. The rest of it was updated in the 1980s, 1990s. And the owner built this house and did most of the updates himself. So he's basically just a tired landlord. He doesn't want to continue managing this property. He doesn't need the money right now. He's not desperate for money. He just does not want to manage it going forward. Good question, Cody. Um, how did you come across this uh, like owner and, and the property? Yeah, so pretty much all of the marketing I do right now is texting. So this was one of our texting leads, um, probably from a tired landlord's list of this owner looking to move on from this property. And then as far as the financials go on it, I am not able to find the ARV. It's such a unique property split into five units and I really have a hard time finding what it's worth. So I just look at the income. This owner is asking 550,000. He owes about 180,000 on the property. His monthly payment is 935 PITI. And then current rents are about 3,700 a month. The owner pays 500 per month in utilities. Taxes are about 245 a month. I estimated insurance at 200 per month and then repairs and maintenance at 350. So repairs and maintenance, I usually do about 10% of rents for that. Um, and going into this, since he wasn't basically needing the money right up front, it was a perfect candidate for me with owner financing. And I went into it with kind of two different approaches. So the first one we'll look at is a seller subordination. Before you go sure. forward, Cody. So it's six bedrooms. Does that mean that one is a two bedroom, one bath? Correct. Okay. The right. rest are one bedroom, one bath. And they do they all have, so this is a single family. So it's, is it an illegal multifamily or is it just non-conforming? Uh, what what is the you know, are there separate entrances are there any shared areas uh let, let's be clear on this property because it is unique yeah so from my understanding there's a shared area where the individuals can go off to their units um a lot of it's shared zone really but they just have kind of their assigned bathrooms and everything that they go to and from everything i could see it's zoned single family so it's not zoned as a five unit. It's just how he's been operating it for, for the past, really since he built it. So one of the things that, that comes up with these types of unique properties is whether they would allow it to be single family financed, right? So if you were to go get financing, you'd want to know that you could get it. Now, I know he has a loan on it, but he may have been using it as his own single family home then and converted it after the fact. And I've had a similar situation once before where I ended up having to talk to the county and get a letter that verified it was grandfathered in. So it sounds like I would need to dig deeper on this one to see if it's grandfathered in, if it would need be able to be underwritten. Is that is that correct? Yeah, you. It's very possible that it could. You might have to go to the city or the county or. Um, to me, yeah. You know, 
one of the things that you're going to to look at is, you know, cities have different rules about how many unrelated parties can be living in a particular premise uh, property. And I believe in Boise, I think it's five. Um, I think they allow five that can can live in one property and be unrelated. So um, th there would be some additional due diligence need to be done on this. But OK, let's let's see where we go with this. Okay. So assuming I will dig into it, but assuming it's all, all on the up and up, um, I did write a couple of offers for this one. So the first one, like I mentioned, he owed about 180. So I wrote the first one as a seller subordination. So purchase price was four or 549, 500. So right about what he was asking. And the down payment was 221, 300. So about 180 would go towards paying off the mortgage. The rest would go directly into his pocket. And I did this because I know he wanted a fairly large down payment. That was one thing he did want even though he didn't need the money up front. So he'll get 40,000 into his pocket and his loan paid off. Um, as far as the monthly payment goes, I estimated it to be about 1,056 on the down payment since we would be borrowing that against the property. Is that, is that all correct? Is what correct? Just that the down payment would be borrowed against the property. Yes, um, so you'd have to pay off that existing debt Mm -hmm. um, where, where are you borrowing this money from? So my idea, and I could be wrong, was borrowing it just from a conventional lender. Since the mortgage yeah, you, you could have some issues with that, um, especially on a property that may or may not, you know, it's zoned single family and single family when you go to get loans on single family homes, most lenders, actually all lenders that I know of, will not allow the seller to carry back a portion of the the, the proceeds. So back in the day, you used to be able to see if you can get the seller to carry 20% and you would get a first for 80 and a seller would carry back 20 and you would get in with no money down. Most residential, I, I don't know any lenders that do that anymore. Uh, there, there may be some out there, but uh, I'm not aware of them. So on commercial, it's a little different. Commercial would be potentially you could do something like that. Um, but I don't know that this is going to um, that this is going to be actually considered commercial, especially. And you mentioned the utilities earlier, so mm -hmm. the seller is paying the utilities for everyone. Yeah, he said he's paying the utilities plus internet. So there's no separate meters or anything. And correct. Um, okay. Well, let, let's let's continue on. But based on that one assumption, I don't know if this offer will work, but let's work through it anyway. And just quickly, from my understanding and those listening, so would it be more of like a hard money lender or a private lender that would loan this money more? Than yeah, no, normally that's what you're looking at. And as soon as I saw the amount and the interest rate, uh, I could tell that you were thinking you were going to go conventionally. And uh, more than likely, what you would be doing is borrowing that from an individual and uh, probably more at like a six, seven, eight percent interest only type rate and then um, uh, and then giving the, the seller their their equity in second position. Yeah, so I have the rose tinted glasses when writing this one. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Yep. Yeah. This is what we do is that uh, we we start thinking and sometimes our thought processes are not 100% correct. And sometimes we come up with new stuff. So it's okay. Let's, let's go through and make sure um, the numbers still make sense and we'll play it out as if you could get this loan. Yeah. And so for the second half of it, um, basically the terms on the note for the seller's equity, 
So the remaining would be 328, 200. So just the purchase price minus the down payment, like you said, in second position, or that'd be first position. It'd be in second position, second the position. 328. Uh-huh. Okay. And then on that would be monthly payments of 911 principal only. And then I did a term of 84 months or seven years that had a balloon payment of 251,619. Okay, why, why, how did you come up with 84 months and why? So a little bit arbitrary. So I wrote another offer that was also at 84 months and that was a length that he was open to on the other offer. Um, so that's why I wrote up this one that had the same duration because longer typically is better. And I know he didn't want to go much longer than this. So what, one of the things that, that probably needs to be pointed out to the seller is that it may be very difficult to get conventional financing on this. And in return, that if he really wants to sell it, he may really have to look at more longer term type financing. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay. So now you figured out your balloon payment. You times 911 times 84, that came out to be whatever it was. And you minus that from the 328, 200. Is that correct? So I, I just use the financial calculator to do that. And then I do it at 0% interest. So I go through the same process I usually would um, when using my financial calculator, but I just put the interest rate at 0% and put in my own payment. So that 911. So present value, the 328, 200, period, 84 months, interest rate, zero, and then payment is negative 911. And the future value comes out to 251, 619, or it was 676 in my calculator, but right about there. Yep, yeah, that's what I got. So if, and again, if you're doing principal only, uh, and you probably could do it your way, but I think that you're going to come out a slight bit different. And, uh, and I'm not exactly sure why with using the financial calculator that way, but um, when it's principal only, we know that every time we pay $911, it's coming off of that 328200 so if we take 911 times 84, it will be a total of 76,524. And then if we minus that from our balance, 328,200, you will get um, 251,676. Okay, I see, that makes sense. Okay, and then on the income side of it. So this, so this, this one, is the, so the goal would be to do what with this property? What, what What's the, the goal? Yeah, so I looked at it in a couple of senses. One of them was holding it for myself if I was able to get that down payment and get in basically with no money up front, consider it something I could hold on my own. Um, the other one was wholesaling the property. Um, I think I, in this example, did a 20,000 fee. Okay. So I looked at the cash on cash or ran the numbers a little bit in both of those scenarios. Okay. So, so when you're showing these income details, is that based on wholesaling it or holding it? So this one, I would have to double check. So based on, I believe it's based on wholesaling it at 483 monthly net. So I do know that monthly payment would be different if I were to hold it versus wholesale it. Or I guess it wouldn't, right? Um, well, th it's going to be a slightly higher price, right? Because you're True, including yeah. your, your assignment fee. Uh, so the cash on cash return would go down. Uh, the monthly net uh, would be the same. The NOI should be the same. Uh, yeah, so for this, I had a monthly net of 438. So what, what, let's look at your NOI for a second. Yeah. Um, does that, your NOI include your debt service? Yes, it does. It okay. Does. So NOI does not include debt service. Gotcha. Okay. So what you're, you're taking out, you're taking your income 
right? So 30, well, whatever it was, 3,700 in rents times 12. Okay? Yep. Uh, which let's figure some of these out as we go. 3,700 times 12, 44,400. Okay, and so now let's talk about what the expenses are. So we know that one expense is taxes. Correct. About three, like 3,000 a year, right? Yep. Insurance, you estimated at 2,400 for the yep. year. Utilities, 500. Uh, what else are we going to have? Maybe management. Yeah, potential management. And I didn't factor that into mine, but I definitely know that's a potential expense that an owner would face. So management, I would probably put at $370 times 12, 44.40. And you know, we probably should have a vacancy factor as well. Uh Let's say 5%. So 5% of 44,400 is 2220. Yep. Or, yeah. And so now, if there are any other, you know, there might be maintenance, there will be maintenance, you know, if you're doing any lawn care, any snow removal, any pest control. Uh, there's going to be repairs, and on this one, you will uh, you you would have to decide: Do you want to have like a capital expense account? Um, uh, but let's say between our capital expense and repairs, let's take eight percent. Okay. Okay. 44,400 times 0.08 is 3,552. Yep. So if we add all these together, 3,552 for um, repairs and capital expense, management, 4,440 plus 500 in utilities, 2,400 in insurance. Boy, would it be 6,000 for utilities for the year? Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, thank you. 3,000 for taxes and uh, 2,220 for vacancy. So about 18,612. You also mentioned he paid for like internet. Yeah, and that was part of that 500. Per oh, month. okay. Okay. So, in reality, your NOI is forty four thousand four hundred minus eighteen thousand six twelve, so twenty five thousand seven eighty eight. I see. Okay. okay. Yeah. And now that is what we have left for a number of things, right? So, you, you are certainly on the right path here. What we can do with that NOI is, so we still know that um, at this point, you're still trying to figure out how much am I going to pay the seller on his equity, right? You came up with 911. I didn't really ask, how did you come up with 911? So when I looked at my other offers, I tried to make the payment on this one similar to that one. So I basically just chose, chose a number that added up to about 1900 to 2000 which is where my other offer was which i think is a really good idea however what i the the way i want to figure that out is i want to figure out what kind of income i have left after all my expenses right so that i can start to figure out how much cash flow can i leave for myself or my buyer and what can i still pay the seller that way I've kind of identified like you did, Hey, there's a payment of about, uh, it doesn't matter how it gets there, but you know, I, I don't really want to exceed 2000 or 2100 or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. 
So if we have 25,788, then we divide it by 12. So we, we basically have $2,149 um, to deal with debt service and income. And uh, so if you are deal, if you are putting 1,056 on your first, and 911 on your second. I see this getting close to zero pretty it, quickly. It, it's that it doesn't leave you a whole lot of money left, yeah. right? So that makes sense. Yeah. And that's that that's exactly what I would go through to kind of figure out. And you, you got to be careful because sellers will leave out, you know, maybe he does management himself. So you know, there's 10% that's not included. Mm -hmm. And Maybe he didn't have many repairs to do. Maybe he didn't spend any money on capital expense. The, the issue is, is capital expense isn't necessarily spent every year, but it's, there's some put aside to deal with you know, the, when the roof wears out, the furnace or the water heater or the windows or you know, whatever the case may be um, needs to be replaced, that there's money. You, know, you don't want to, you don't want to go into this and you know making five hundred dollars a month cash flow, and uh, you find out um, six months in you got to replace the roof for sixteen thousand um, yeah, dollars. That wouldn't be ideal. No. Okay. So, whenever there's any kind of cash flow, or you're thinking about cash flow, that that's exactly what I like to do, and we've talked about this on many previous podcasts that. I like to, in this case, we're going to figure it out just like commercial property. You know, we're going to figure out our net operating income. And then we're going to figure out what that translates into per month. And you know, can the property afford to pay the seller and you? Um, that will make whether it makes any sense. Uh, or if you have to uh, go back and change some things, right? So was there any potential in rent increases like where the rents are on the low end? Yeah. So two of the units are at 800 and the rest are at 650. I think that math adds up. So one's a two bedroom, right? That's getting yeah, a higher yeah. amount. Uh, my guess is, is that one's probably a bigger unit than maybe some of the rest. Mm -hmm. To me, this is almost like shared housing and where you're almost like renting by the room it might not be completely like that, but it seems kind of similar. And you know, when you're renting by the room, you might get five, six hundred dollars depending on the area where you have shared kitchen or shared bathrooms. And um, and I don't know, but do they share a kitchen? I believe they do. I yeah, would need they to probably do. Right. I need to double check on that. Yeah, my guess is they don't have five kitchens in this yeah. house. Um, although they do have a number of bathrooms and maybe everyone has their own designated bath. Uh, mm -hmm. th that's that's a bonus in a kind of shared living. I mean, sometimes they have to share bathrooms too. And um, Okay, so th that's option one. Um which um, me personally, I don't see the cash flow. Um, yeah. uh, and why don't we just do a quick, let, let's just think about this for a second and just see if these numbers would even work just doing it conventionally. So if the purchase price is that he's asking 550, right? Yep. So if you put down 20%, you're going to put down $110,000, right? And 110 minus 550 is 440. Correct. Okay, so that would be our present value. And then let's say that you are going to just go get a loan, a non-owner occupied loan, let's say 4% over 30 years, 360 months. Your payment's 2100. Okay. And then if you add in uh, the taxes, um, so let's figure this out 2100 
Mm-hmm. Okay, you're going to make that payment, principal and interest, every single month times 12. Okay. That's 25200 right? Now let's add in our taxes plus 3000 plus insurance 2400 plus utility 6000 plus management 4440 and um And then we still have maintenance, repairs, and um, vacancy, right? We're already at, uh, even conventionally, if you went and bought this with 20% down, I don't think there's any income. And that's probably where I would start. So I knew right away, do I even want to deal with this, right? So um, when the rents, so when you look at this and you say, hey, the rents are $3,700 a month, the first thing I'm always looking at is how do the rents compare to the purchase price? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and Cody, you know this, and Nicole, you know this as well, that we talk about the 1% rule. So we know that the, the 1% rule, you can't guarantee, it's not guaranteed, right? But it's a good place to start. So the closer you are to that 1% rule or better than that 1%, so over that 1% rule, the better the chances of it being a good cash flowing property. Yeah. And in my mind, I looked at it and said, oh, this is Boise. Right. Which you're not getting 1% rule, right? It's not happening, right? So I, and I agree that looking at it on face value, Mm -hmm. That if you said, "Hey, I can buy a property for five fifty that's bringing in thirty seven hundred a month," I'd say you probably need to look into it more. That it's probably worthwhile. And uh, you know, we we've been looking at stuff in some markets. Uh, we talked about this on our last episode, where uh, you know, in LA, uh, we were looking at something that came in at twenty thousand dollars a month income. And they're asking 4.2 million, right? So not even not even close to the 1%, less than half a percent. And uh, so the one thing we do know is that the further we get away from that, the, the more money you're going to have to put down to get any kind of cash flow. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Um. Do we have any idea how long we've gone on this episode? I think it's 20. I think we're, 20 yeah, we're, we're 20 plus, I'd say. Okay. Um, well, th- th- let's, why don't we do this? Nicole, let's get your, you know, what, where do you, what do you see with this? Um, uh, yeah, a little different perspective. Um, I mean, honestly, you guys went a little fast. <laughs> So I'm, I'm a little lost on how you figured out, um, uh, like how it would or wouldn't ca- cash flow on this seller subordination, like the, the numbers that you ran through on, okay. um, how you figured that out. Okay. Exactly. So let's, let's work through it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So let's take the income. Okay. So right now they are getting $3,700 a month in rent, right? They're all full too, right? They're, they're all rented. Uh, really, the only question becomes now is, could you get any more out of it? And based on what it is, if you could, it's not much, right? So mm-hmm. let's take 3,700 times 12. That's $44,400, okay? That's the number that if everything stays rented for 12 months that we should expect to make. Now what we're gonna do is look at all the expenses that we know we're gonna have to pay. Some of them we know what they are, some of them we're just gonna estimate. And right now we're just trying to figure out, you know, but we're, we're not trying to be precise here. So Cody may have some of this information. He may not. 
Uh, and ultimately, if he went under contract, he would um, verify that. But what we do know is taxes mm -hmm. is 3000 Insurance, which he estimated, and to be honest, that, that might be on the high side, I don't know, um, is 2400 Utilities, which the seller told him was about $500 a month. And who knows, that might not be even close. I, I don't know. Um, and now we, we've got to dig a little deeper. Okay. So we've got to have a repair. We absolutely have to have a repair estimate, right? Um, so uh, depending on what kind of condition this property's in right now, um, I, I would normally look at a three to 5%, um, repair estimate. Okay. And that's percentage of the income. That's of the income. Right. Yep. Um, so let, let, let's be conservative. Okay. Uh, normally I'm, I'm going to be actually, let's be aggressive and just <laughs> say 3%. So that's $1,300 a year. Let's call it. Okay. Um, and 1300 doesn't go very far, right? Um, uh, if someone moves out, you may have to clean some carpets and do some touch up paint and, uh, you know, uh, do that two, three times and that's gone. So, uh, there may be some maintenance, uh, whether it's lawn care or whatever. Now he probably passes that on. So let's not even add that in. Okay. Maybe there's no pest control needed. And in my opinion, there probably is, but let's not worry about it, okay? Capital expense, okay? Well, when you have five different people living in your house, uh, that they could be beating it up a little bit, right? Um, uh, but capital expense is gonna be more like the bigger ticket items. So your roof, your windows, your HVAC furnace, central air kind of things. And, you know, things that just wear out over time, uh, but they cost quite a bit. So you, you're going to want to put, uh, and I would always put this on a commercial deal. I, I'm treating this as a commercial deal, even though it's more residential. And uh, if this was just a single family home or a duplex, fourplex, something, I wouldn't include a capital expense, but you certainly could. And I would put probably another 3%. So I'd put $1,300, $1,500 for capital expense. Okay. Okay. Now, we're, we're going to have vacancy, right? Um, and the vacancy, will it doesn't fall under expenses. It comes under income. And, uh, you know, 5%... It, you think in a really hot market like Boise that 5% is not very much, and it's really, it's not. But if you had someone move out and you had to do a little bit of work and it took you two weeks to get that done and it, found, it took two weeks to find the new person, you, you've lost a month worth of rent. Um, so let's take 5%, 44,400 times 0 0.05, 2220. So our new uh, income really is 44,400 minus 2220 is 42,180. Okay. And now the only other expense that I'd really want to put in there is, uh, I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to manage this thing. Yeah. Um, right? So management, management can range, you know, depending on what market you're in and uh, what kind, what you are actually uh, having being what the property is. Mm -hmm. But on something like this, it's going to be somewhere between eight to 10 percent and eight to 10 percent of what the income is. So take that 42,180 and let's take 10 percent of that. About forty two hundred. Yeah, let's call forty two hundred. 
So are these all the expenses? I would say it's pretty close. Yeah. You know, there, there may be some, we may be a little high on a couple, we may be a little low on a couple, but we're in the ballpark, right? Would you agree, Nicole? You you have a rental. Um, Cody, What would you guys agree? I think so. I would. Right? I think it's yeah. pretty exhaustive, yeah. All right, so let's add them up. It's about 18200 Okay. So... Now let's take the 42,180 minus 18,200. About 23,980. 23,980. So you can leave it just as that. I like to divide it by 12. And that mm -hmm. will tell me, hey, how much money is left over for each month? And that's our NOI, correct? That is the NOI, right? Okay. And if you just divided it by 12, what would you have? Just under $2,000, right? That's about $2,000. Yeah. It's like $1,998. Okay. So what on a on a property that's worth $550, um, you know, what's left that you know that you you haven't paid the seller yet? Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and in Cody's example. It was a thousand dollars on the first, or a thousand fifty, or something like that, yep. and nine hundred on the second. Well, so there it goes. That doesn't work. Um, uh, but what what would work here? Um, mm -hmm. Not much. I mean, really, uh, the, was the 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 seller has a loan already, right? Um, yeah, about one eighty. Okay, and. It, it, are we sure that that 935 is PITI? Yeah, that's what he said. All right. So to me, that would mean that, and I doubt that um, insurance could be anywhere near that high you know, with uh, still yeah. only that low of a payment. But let's say that $300 of that um, 935, and those numbers just don't add up to me. Um, mm -hmm. my, my guess is, is that it's not PITI. Um, you know, if you still owe, if you've got a loan at 180 right now and you got it at 2.5% over 30 years, uh, your payment's still 711. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how those numbers really work out, but so we know, right? Guaranteed that we got to make that payment, right? That that's absolute. So that takes away basically a thousand of the. We we have one thousand dollars left to work with. Yeah. To deal with the seller's equity of three hundred and seventy thousand. And your cash flow or your buyer's cash flow, right? That's it. That's all the money that's left in this property. Does that make more sense now, Nicole? Yeah, it was definitely helpful to run that through so I could see the the end number. That's impressive that you were kind of able to eyeball that. <laughs> well, the, 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 here's the, how you eyeball it, okay? This mm -hmm. is the quick and easy way. Um, because I, I agree totally with what Cody said is that, hey, if I saw, you know, 3,700 and they were asking 550, I'd be like, all right, um, yep, I, I want to investigate a little more. You know, that, that's not a number that, hey, if I'm dealing in Ohio um, that I want to see. Now, now it's like, hey, if I'm getting 3,700, the purchase price better be more like three, 300,000. Um, but in Boise, you know, in that kind of market, Hey, th that's not bad, mm -hmm. but now here's my quick and easy fix. Well, can we go back to your whiteboard really quick, Cody? Yeah. So, and you can do this, you know, all you got to do is learn that you, how to use your financial calculator and five buttons. And, um, <laughs> this will save you a bunch of time. So part of it is really knowing your market, right? Like when you see the rents compared to the purchase price, like that's indicator kind of number one of, Hey, maybe I want to look into this a little more versus, you know, like, well, like doing I, math on all of the, all of the properties that maybe you want to buy. 
So what I would tell you is that, yes, markets are different, right? And uh, there are better cash flowing markets and they're better appreciating markets. Boise is an appreciating market. And uh, so finding something that rents would be close to 1% is pretty much not going to happen right now. And, uh, you know, we made a living off that, you know, for five years dealing with some of the smaller cities around Boise where we could get that, but we still couldn't get it in Boise, right? So now after their huge um, influx of people driving prices up, rents up, that the 1% rule is gone even in those smaller cities now. But if you start looking in the more the Midwest, the Southeast, um, you still find that 1% rule. You find better than that 1% rule, but you're not going to see the same kind of appreciation, right? That they're typically, you know, even Texas, right? Now you can find stuff in Texas, even with their ridiculously high taxes, they, you can find stuff for 100000 that'll run for twelve fifty a month. And uh, it still exists in parts of it, um, not everywhere, but parts of it. So, but here's here's your quick, easy fix, and then we'll wrap this up because I didn't want it to go this long. Um, so, uh, just take your your purchase price, what he's asking, and think about what what would happen if I go and just go get a conventional loan. What would have to happen? And uh, for sure, you, you would put down 20%. For sure. It's a non-owner occupied property. So um, he's asking 550, 20% is $110,000. Okay. And so that means that we're financing 440. That's our present value. Then, you know, what, what are interest rates, um, you know, for non-owner occupied? Probably, you know, high yeah. threes to Three. low fours, right? Um, yeah, so I, I'm just going to pick 4%, okay? It may be a little higher. It might be a slightly lower. I don't know. Um, I don't really go and get non-owner occupied loans <laughs> for single family residences. So, um and then we're going to amortize it over 30 years. 360 is in. Solve for payment. Okay, The payment, principal and interest. Okay, So everything that you see under expenses is not included. Okay, None of that's included. Our payment is $2,100. Do you see any way that we can reduce that payment? Even if we got 3.75, it's not going to make much difference, right? Yeah. And we're not getting any lower than really that. So, so now we know, hey, the payment's going to be about 2,100. So let's just times 2,100 over the course of 12 months. 2,100 times 12 is 25,200, right? Plus... Add in all your expenses for the year, 18200 <laughs> equals 43400 Now, if we look back at our income minus the vacancy, we're only making 42180 So for putting down 20%, 110000 you should expect to make no money. Actually, maybe <laughs> lose a little bit of money. Okay. Yeah. But that's what you'll see in these higher price markets is that um, either you've got to get the, the rents up, the income up, or you got to get the price to come down, or your last resort is I got to put more money down. Mm -hmm. And uh, as wholesalers and uh, investors, I don't like any of those options, right? Um, they all kind of suck. Um, you know, what, what's your cash on cash return here? negative <laughs> right zero <laughs> zero yeah <laughs> yeah um so but I, what, what i want to do is i still want to go through your second option because i want to see how you work through it um even though i think we've identified that um and, and if this was a free and clear property, I would say there might be some things that we could still try to, to do to make it work. 
But I'm telling you, one of the issues is going to be is that payment because that payment's going to eat up. He, the seller hasn't gotten anything, but we still got to mm -hmm. make that payment, right? Um, and we know that after making that payment, there's only a thousand dollars left to work with. Um, you know, what, what we could offer him 500 and we can get 500. Um, no, thanks. Um, that, that doesn't really work. So, uh, all right. Good example. And, uh, hopefully that made a little more sense, Nicole. Yeah, definitely. That was, um, helpful to like see it on the whiteboard and, and then also run through it like your little trick there with going conventional and running those numbers. Yeah. Awesome. And then we can jump into option two in the next episode. Yep. Perfect. So quickly, um, you know, please rate and review us. Hopefully you like our new uh, format where we're doing YouTube videos. We're trying to give you more visual, more details, two different perspectives. Um, let us know how we're doing and uh, check out our YouTube channel and uh Come join our Creative Financing Podcast Facebook group. Uh, I saw a question in there yesterday, really good. Um, Cody, I know you had a good answer and uh, uh, great learning, you know, uh, place that you can bring your leads, your deals, your questions, and you will get them answered. Uh, and then, of course, if you are interested in furthering your education in some way or another, we have an apprentice program. Our apprentice program has been uh, dealing with wholesaling virtually. We are starting to move away from doing 100% wholesaling. So we're looking at acquiring and rehabbing and um, repositioning and a uh, lot more commercial. Uh, we'd like commercial right now and a lot less competition in that realm as well. More creative finance for sure. So if you're looking at, you know, learning those types of, of things, I'm in contact Rebecca at Rebecca, we offer options.com. Uh, I have a, the creative financing Academy that was uh, created out of the podcast where we focus strictly on creative financing, how to use it in your existing business, how to create it with a new business, uh, strategies, thought processes, exit strategies um, in detail, uh, how you can create passive income without owning properties. Uh, if you have some interest there, uh, contact me, Jeff at weofferoptions.com. Happy to chat with you. No pressure. Um, but we want people that uh, want to be in our programs. Uh, we don't have a sales team that's going to pressure you to give you uh, give us a credit card and plus they're super affordable um uh any last words both of you yeah um all of that information that you just mentioned is going to be in the uh, description if you're watching on youtube it'll be in the description below and then on the podcast it'll definitely be in the show notes great decision on my part to bring these two on because new energy and a whole bunch of YouTube stuff and social media. So let's blow this thing up. Let's uh, try to help you learn more about creative financing, how it can help you in your business. With that, go out and create some terms. See you next time. Mm -hmm.